Divine Mercy Sunday. This is a great day when we most especially focus on Christ's merciful nature. Now, you've heard me say this in homilies in the past. Mercy is the primary attribute of God, even more so than his power or his role as the creator of the universe. We need to understand that God is merciful above all else. Because until we get that in our heads, we will miss the entire point of God. And don't get me wrong, I, I realize how tough it is to understand that. It is so much easier to think of God as some sort of cosmic creative force or a massive invisible person that lives in the sky with immense power. We imagine God like that because if we made ourselves to be gods, that's how we'd end up. We would fixate on the power of godhood. We would fixate on our ability to create and or destroy, and no one can stand in our way. We would grant wishes to those that we like and smite those that we do not like. That is what a person would be like if we elevated them to godlike status. The real God is someone else entirely. His power is revealed in mercy, forgiveness, and love. In fact, for God, mercy and love are the exact same things. So today is Divine Mercy Sunday. We could just as easily call it Divine Love Sunday. That being said, I want to share something with you. I recently stumbled on a great answer to the question, what do we mean when we say I love you? Now, I had never heard this before. I finished draft one of my homily and I said it to a couple of people and all of them were like, oh yeah, I've heard that before. So some of you may have heard this answer before. For me, I heard it for the first time earlier this week. That's got to count for something. What do we mean when we say I love you? I love you equals you're worth the trouble. I love that. You know, that, that is love. Valuing and caring about a person in spite of all the trouble that comes along for the ride. And that's huge because we are sinners living in a fallen world. We all create trouble for ourselves, for others, for God. We are walking bags of trouble. But we're beautiful. We are beautiful bags of trouble. And we're worth keeping around. So do you see already how love is tied with mercy? We need mercy in our hearts because, because of all the fuss and frustration that we cause one another all the time in life. If you have no real sense of mercy, well, then in your eyes, the vast majority of people are just not worth the trouble. And if you really believe that, you will reach the point where you stop leaving the house. You stop doing anything in your life in the vain and naive attempt to stay away from trouble. Well, good luck with that. If you stay home to avoid trouble, I promise you trouble will come knocking. So, I want you to think about how powerful that statement is in life, that you are worth the trouble. Uh, more than anybody else, I picture newlyweds. You know, they're freshly moved in together. They're just starting their life as husband and wife under the same roof. I figure they're going to make it a month before they have that rant. I assume every newlywed couple has this rant early on when they start living in the same house. Honey, 
I had no idea how hard it would be to live with you. You don't clean the dishes after a meal. Your stuff takes up 90% of the bathroom countertops. And your toenails are so jagged and sharp, I am being stabbed in the shins with little daggers all night long. But you know what? For all of that and all your annoying habits, you're worth the trouble. I love you. You are worth the trouble. That's love. That is mercy. That is divinity showing up in real life. And for the record, this does not have to be in the context of a romantic relationship. I say I love you to my male friends all the time. Normally, after a phone call or after like a series of texts, because you know, I'm the group priest, so my friends have a tendency to call me, they need to rant or, you know, they need me to be more of a mentor figure or something like that. And, you know, after talking with them or, you know, like a several text long chain, I have a tendency to end with, thank you for updating me, Al. I appreciate it. Love you, man. I say it unsarcastically, unironically, because what I'm really saying is, you're my friend and you're worth the trouble. We are always worth the trouble in God's eyes. We are always worth the trouble that we cause him. A God that is not all merciful will eventually consider you too much trouble to deal with and you will be thrown away. Such is the case with idols. Such is the case with powerful people that you want to attach yourself to somehow. If you strive in life to be a sycophant or a groupie, I'm sorry, but that person you think is so important, eventually they will no longer have any use for you. And things that have no use are thrown away. You deserve better than that. And don't misunderstand. You have people in your life right now who will never throw you away. But they're the people who love you and will forgive you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Ultimate perfect mercy is precisely why God is different from anyone or anything else that we will ever encounter in this life. Only God is truly all merciful. To him and to him alone are we truly, completely worth the trouble. That is divine love. That is divine mercy. And it is one of the greatest gifts, if not the greatest gift we can offer to others as a result of our faith and our devotion to Christ. <laughs>